Do adventurers often go to places like this? Huh. I guess so. So, this is where you always meet your wife in your dreams? Yes, for the most part. Our place is on the summit, just up ahead. When I saw her in my dreams, we didn't do anything but talk about ordinary, mundane topics. I'd tell her about our daughter, Hydar, and she always listened intently. She would also reminisce about the past with me, telling me interesting stories and cracking jokes. It feels like no matter how long we may chat, it's never enough. Sometimes, it's the little things in life that matter the most. This is the part I'm a little puzzled about. I am very familiar with dreams, and normally, they lack logic and continuity. But you said she could remember what you had told her before, right? That's right. She always listened to me carefully in real life, and now, she's doing the same in my dreams. She always surprises me with some details from our lives in the real world. The fact that she can remember such things makes me feel like she's alive. Whoa, that's pretty weird. Well, dreams are kind of weird to begin with. However, the problem is that his dreams have too much structure and continuity. Most dreams are far more fragile than you can imagine. For example, a loud noise outside your window in the real world could cause your dream self to get loaded into and fired out of a big cannon. Another example. If you're thirsty in the real world, then you might find yourself trudging through a desert in your dream. But the appearance of your wife seems unusually stable and unaffected by any outside interference. Statistically, this should be extremely rare. I don't understand it either. But I have no reason to suspect or reject these dreams. They're too beautiful. But I still want to figure out the how and the why. These kind of dreams are novel to me as well. That's why I want to have a look at the scene your dreams have been taking place at. Let's go. Just think of it as a nice little hike to the top of the mountain. I'll ensure your safety. Kidding. This place definitely isn't safe. No matter. We'll just finish them quickly. Huh? Are you going to fight too, Nahida? Of course. This is all part of our little trip. Yeah. <laughs> 
about this place. I do not plan to deny the power of longing. Such an intense but unquantifiable emotion could indeed have the power to organize dreams. His wife must be a really amazing person. Huh? Wait, where'd he go? Oh, so you are waiting for me here? Well, guess what? I've brought someone amazing with me today. When the Dendro Archon said she wanted to come with me, I could hardly believe it. I'll bring Hydar once I'm more familiar with the way here. She's been telling me that she really misses you. Huh? What's wrong with him? There's nobody there! <sighs> Wait, Minar. Don't go that way. It's dangerous. He's gonna fall! Catch him! Whew. Luckily he didn't fall. But what was all that rambling about? He also looks like he's passed out. He's in the dream now. What he said just now matches almost perfectly with the dreams he subscribed to us earlier. So, he fell asleep and started to have the same dream? I find it a little strange as well, but we mustn't awaken someone while they're sleepwalking. All we can do is sit here and wait. Uh, huh? Minar. Where's Minar? Oh, good! You're finally awake! Uh, what happened? Huh? Sleepwalking? Oh, right. It was all just a dream. The moment I reached the summit, I saw my wife, Minar, sitting there and walked over to her. After I introduced her to you, she seemed a little flustered and started walking away. I told her to stop because of the cliff, and then she seemed to suddenly disappear. A strong wind started to blow around me and the sky grew dark. When I realized something wasn't right, I woke up. That sounds pretty wild. Maybe you were just too tired. I don't think so. I slept a lot yesterday, and I don't feel very sleepy now. Maybe we've affected the way his subconscious constructs dreams by following him here. Anyway, all that matters is that you woke up safe and sound. I think I know what happened now. I'm sorry. If it weren't for you, I would have fallen. Let's head back now. Don't come back to this place again for the time being. Oh, uh, okay. Nahida, what's on your mind? Paimon's a little worried now. We still don't have enough evidence to work off of, so it's hard to draw any reliable conclusions yet. But I'm concerned that Ilmon's case may not be unique to him. Oh, right! Come to think of it, there were lots of people from the event who had vivid memories of their dreams. Right. And not only at a moment of dreams, there may be people like this all across Sumeru. We need to understand what's happening and the rate of its development as soon as possible. Then there's no time to lose! Let's head back! Stop standing there, Ilmon! Let's go!
Oh, you're back already. How'd it go? An emergency on our hands. Please notify everyone here that while they can continue to discuss their dreams, they mustn't try to visit or recreate the locations and scenes that they have been experiencing in them. What? Uh, all right, if that's the wish of the great Dendro Archon. But could you at least tell me what happened? You all look so serious. I see. I never knew even a dream could be so dangerous. Don't worry. I'll be sure to notify all the event participants and inform the other staff members about what has happened. Using the event registration list, I should be able to contact more people that were interested in dreams and warn them about the situation. Thank you. That would be very helpful. Let me confirm if all of today's participants are still here. Atta has already left. It seemed that he was on his way to make a hammer, so that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, wait a second. Where's Katya? Has anyone seen Katya? Has she already left? Oh, I, I think she already left. She said there was somewhere she wanted to go. Oh no. Did she want to look for the place from her dreams too? Can you tell us where she went? Yes, she did briefly mention it. Somewhere near... Chatracum Cave. All right, thank you. We'll go look for her. Please help us tell the others not to do anything reckless. Sure thing. <sighs> Who would have known things would have turned out like this? She hasn't been injured or jolted awake yet. Let's carefully move her somewhere safer. See you tomorrow, Professor Aisha. <sighs> huh? Why? Why am I back here again? Dreaming? But what about Professor Aisha? Oh, I see. It was all just a dream. Well, that makes sense. After all, it hasn't changed a single bit. Huh? What's it? Nearly 20 years, and it still hasn't bloomed. <sighs> Does it have something to do with your dream? Please, tell us what you mean. Ah, sorry. I'm still feeling a little groggy. Please give me a moment here. <sighs> all right. Where to start? Right, this plant. So, Professor Aisha gave me this plant just before she left. She was a good friend of my parents, and my first real tutor. She was also an outstanding Amorta researcher. In addition to her extraordinary academic talents, she was also skilled in combat, and would accept lots of work from the Adventurers Guild. 
Oh, so you mean she's left on an adventure? Yes. When I was about ten years old, she told me that she must go look for the secrets of the Abyss, and that she would be gone for a long time. I grabbed hold of her and wouldn't let go. I didn't know what the Abyss was. I just knew that she was like family to me. She hugged me, and we cried for some time until I fell asleep. When I woke up, I was already back home. She still decided to leave, but had left behind a letter for me saying that I was the person she cared for most in this world. She claimed that investigating the Abyss could help more ordinary people protect the people and things they care about. She had obtained some important evidence during her past adventures. If she didn't set off right away, she might miss the perfect opportunity. Guess Ad Astra Abbasask isn't just a slogan. She left a seed in the letter, telling me that if it sprouted and bloomed, then she'd come back no matter what sort of risky situation she was in. She said she looked forward to seeing me all grown up. But strangely, I've tried watering it, feeding it, everything I could think of, but I've never been able to get it to bloom. I even went to ask the Immorta researchers, and they couldn't explain it either. May I have a look at the plant? Of course. I was hoping the great Dendro Archon could help me solve this problem. Let me see. Hmm. <laughs> huh? We've never seen that look on Nahida's face before. <sighs> she... she looks a little unwell. Um, hold on, we'll be right back. What's wrong, Nahida? You can't tell what's wrong with the plant either? No... I immediately understood what's happening with that plant. I'm just not sure if I should say it. This plant is not known to the academic world. It's a new species that her teacher managed to cultivate by some special means. Judging by its features, I can tell from the moment it sprouted, it'll never be able to bloom. It, it can't be! It means that this Professor Aisha she keeps mentioning might have foreseen the danger and was prepared to never return. From my experience observing people, she would undoubtedly regard this as a brutal revelation. When forced to confront such brutal truths, people may break down into tears, talk nonsense, or lose their tempers. I know she has to face the truth, but at the same time, I don't want to hurt her. Tell me, what should I do? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, seems like you've already got a good idea of the feelings she might experience. But... Wouldn't that mean I'm just pushing it all on you? What if she just gets angry at you instead? It's alright. There are all kinds of people, and the examples you observed are just the most extreme cases. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Let's go back and tell her. Huh? It'll never bloom? But, how is that possible? If a plant is unable to bloom, doesn't that mean it can't reproduce either? All that's left for it to do is slowly wither away. Are you saying... she never intended to return? Seriously? So everything she said was a lie? But she meant well. Since the separation was inevitable, she hoped that you would be able to come to grips with such a cruel parting a little later in life. Yeah, her love, care, and attention to you, all those warm moments were real. 
I guess she had hoped that you could understand and respect her choice after learning the truth. I see. Sorry, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but it's just... Just so much to take in. The dreams are so beautiful. Yet reality is heartlessly cold. I really thought she had come back. I had so much to tell her. These dreams may not be as pure and beautiful as they seem. Some kind of power may be exploiting your feelings. <sighs> really? Yes. So with that in mind, until our investigation is completed, please return to the event and ignore any further temptations from your dreams. I see. Thank you for rescuing me. And sorry for the trouble. Luckily, the plant didn't get hurt either. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anything left to remember her by. Thanks, Traveler and Paimon. She seems to have finally accepted the truth, but I think she'll still need a long time to come to terms with her feelings. I saw her waver the moment you mentioned love. It was almost like a gentle rain, arriving just in time to put out a fire that was about to spread. It's because people have something called empathy. Empathy? Hmm, I see. This is valuable knowledge indeed. By the way, you said there may be something that's trying to exploit their feelings. Any idea what that might be? Yes. What's common between Ilmon and Katia's cases is that they've both lost someone dear to them. And now, they get to meet the people they cherish in their dreams again, and the people feel more real than anything a regular dream could hope to create. Instead of interpreting it as a result of their longing, I have to consider a more antagonistic explanation. Someone is taking advantage of their longing. Yeah, they're just causing these people to dream. What are they after? This is exactly what we need to investigate. Anyway, let's pay another visit to a moment of dreams. I have a bad feeling about all this. I hope things haven't gotten any worse. We're back! How's everything here? Uh, I am so sorry, Great Dendro Archon. We're still trying to figure out how to explain the whole thing to everyone. Because of your warning, we've brought dreamers here even if they were completely unaware of the danger. But some of them have already fallen asleep, and they haven't woken up for a long time. I fear there's nothing we can do about it. A moment of dreams is just a small interest group. We don't have enough staff members to handle this. Just as I expected. It seems my guess was correct. It's the Dendro Archon! She's back! Uh, what happened? W why have we been gathered here? Many of you here have been experiencing some beautiful dreams. But I'm sorry to tell you that based on our investigation, there's some kind of conspiracy behind them. Before we learn the truth, please don't try to recreate the scenes in your dreams. Whatever you see, don't be tempted by them. Huh? But... I don't think it's a big deal. <laughs> Aren't we just dreaming? It's not like dreams will have an effect on others. We've already met two people who ran off to the countryside alone and got caught in dangerous situations by falling to the temptations in their dreams. That's right! These aren't just dreams! It's serious! Alright, I get it, I get it. So does that mean once we have some conclusive results from the investigation, we can continue to enjoy these dreams? Yeah, I still want to visit my sister in my dreams. I'm sorry if what I'm about to say sounds a little offensive, Great Dendro Archon, but... We had a discussion with the folks who just arrived here. In all of our dreams, we were able to reunite with people who were very close to us. They all seemed as if they were alive again, which makes us reluctant to wake up. Yes, that's also what we've observed in our investigation. So if the results of this investigation would mean an end to those dreams, that'd be quite cruel to us. All of us understand the danger, but... Perhaps you can't quite understand just how much those people mean to us. 
I don't think everyone will be on board with the plan to abandon these dreams for good. Before the conclusion of the investigation, they'll at least want to meet the people in their dreams one last time and say goodbye. We've never had such a difficult situation before. It appears that not many people are willing to cooperate. So they still want to return to their dreams despite knowing the danger? That's right. Compared with these sweet and beautiful dreams, our warnings of danger are dull and emotionless. It looks like the situation will inevitably spiral out of control. The more time we waste, the more people will ignore our warnings and return to their alluring dreams. So, what should we do? Seems we have to go into a dream and find out the truth for ourselves. Pedrush, is there anyone here who's experiencing a marvelous dream right now? Ah, uh, let me think. Uh, yes, this way. Good. Please take us there. This lady refused to heed our warnings and fell asleep here a little earlier. Hmm. She's only asleep and hasn't started sleepwalking. It seems she hasn't sunk too deep into her dream yet. Do we also need to fall asleep if we want to go into her dream? Don't worry about that. I'm Lesser Lord Kusanali, after all. Now, don't be nervous. Just close your eyes. Imagine yourselves as waves gradually rolling onto the beach. You slowly wash over the shore and sink into the sand. Traveler, you look a little disoriented. Really? Paimon didn't notice anything. Anyway, seems like we've made it into the dream. I thought we would arrive at some familiar scene, but we seem to have landed in a completely unfamiliar place. Whoa, so many giant plants, even in the sky! Amazing. Theoretically, we should have gone straight into Debbie's dream. Things do seem to have gone a bit sideways here. Anyway, let's see if we can find any leads. now. Let's go in and have a look. Hey, this place looks familiar. 
familiar? Isn't it Puspa Cafe? Oh, Paimon sees Debbie! She's right over there! Looks like we've come to the right place! These alluring dreams often portray a scene from real life, which concurs with our previous findings. Really? But well, what about that space we were in just now? You can't mean... This is another collective dream? Yes. Given that so many people have been experiencing these beautiful dreams, I would say it's very likely that they're interconnected. Compared to an interconnected dream, independent individual dreams would be much harder to manage and manipulate. Ah, oh, Paimon gets it now! Well, let's go talk with Debbie. Oh, but there are some other people next to her. Uh, are they dreaming too? If this space is exclusive to Debbie's dream, then the others beside her are most likely the people she cherishes. Anyway, we should confirm that first, just to be sure. Huh. How do we do that? Just leave it to me. The coffee here still tastes the same as ever. <laughs> you two have traveled all around to that. Surely you've all tasted better coffee than this. I suppose so, but no matter how good things may be elsewhere, nothing beats the taste of home. That's right. It's hard to change your tastes. Anyway, here's to your return home. Welcome back, everyone. Oh. How could they be? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Huh? She sounds a little hesitant. I've confirmed that this dream belongs only to Debbie, because I'm unable to hear the thoughts of the other two people with her. So, this is the power of the Dendro Archon? Uh, Paimon had better watch her thoughts from now on. <laughs> don't worry. I don't often use my powers like this. It's rather impolite. All right. I need to get myself ready. It won't be easy to break it to her, but there's no avoiding it now. The, the Great Dendro Archon! Uh, what brings you here? I I'm sorry to interrupt your celebration, but... Have you noticed that what's happening here doesn't quite match up with your memories? I... I don't quite understand, Great Dendro Archon. What do you mean? I get it. The Dendro Archon is trying to say that it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that we're able to gather here. Hey, how about a cup of coffee for all of you? My treat. We just returned from a fruitful adventure. Memories? A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? Think carefully. You of all people should know what really happened to them. Are you sure that meeting here and chatting the day away like this isn't just a product of your own wishful thinking? Uh, uh, yes. The reports from the Steambird were true. The ship they were on struck a reef and sank. And I never heard from Basima and Gaspar again. Hey, come on now. What are you talking about, Debbie? Yeah, trust your memories. Nothing you see here is real! I get it now. This is a dream, isn't it? But since it's my dream, it doesn't matter if this is real or not. I enjoy the way things are here. I no longer have to face the tragedies of real life. These friends mean the world to me. Nobody else can understand me like they do. There's nothing wrong with continuing this dream. Is there? I'm worried that if you were to continue dreaming like this, the lines between dreams and reality will gradually become too blurred for you. These dreams will always give you what you want, while reality remains full of pain and difficult situations. If you are not careful, you can get hurt. Don't worry. I still have control. 
I won't let it go that far. Are you sure? Hey, how about we put all this troublesome stuff aside and get back to our coffee and snacks, hmm? Whether it's just a dream or real life, you should be happy. You can't just brush off something like this. We don't even know how you people got here or where you even came from. <sighs> Sorry. Paimon didn't mean to upset anyone. No, it's all right. I understand that you're just trying to look out for me. It seems that for now, this place is still relatively harmless for you. But I wonder if there's any way to go deeper into the dream. Huh. Now that you mention it, I once heard a strange voice tell me that there's an entrance here. I'm not interested in checking it out at the moment, but maybe I'll go in and have a look later. Okay. Thanks for your help. Just as I expected, we're only on the surface of this dream. Let's go. dreams work. We've left Debbie's dream, but the dream is still continuing onward. I'm not sure where it'll lead us. This dream has the ability to create imaginary people, which is why people are so unwilling to wake up. If it weren't for what we just saw, Paimon might still find that a bit hard to believe. I have a guess. If these dreams are connected, then there should be some sort of order to them. The fact that Debbie was able to realize that she was dreaming means that she is not very deep in the dream yet. But the space we're in has been turned upside down. Do you remember the characteristics of dreams that I mentioned earlier? Oh, right! Dreams are chaotic! That's right! It's possible that we're heading deeper into this dream now. And the deeper we go, the closer we'll get to the essence of the dream. Right! So the answers might be waiting for us deeper in the dream! Yes, and we should get ready for whatever we may encounter. <laughs> 